Question 7 says, Ram moves with a velocity of 10 meter per second in west direction. Shyam moves in a direction 23 degree east of north. Ram is 100 meter away from Shyam in direction 53 degree east of north of him. What should be the speed in meter per second of Shyam so that he collides with Ram? Let's put their positions in the xy plane. Ram is 100 meter away from Shyam in direction 53 degree east of north. So that means suppose Sham is here, we call Sham by S and Ram is 100 meter away, 53 degree east of north. So if this is north, then 53 degree east of north, that means this angle is 53 degree. Here is Ram, right? And Ram is moving with velocity of 10 meter per second in west direction. So the velocity of Ram is like this. Here we have this as north, this as east. So this is velocity of Ram. Magnitude is 10 meter per second. And Sham is moving in direction 23 degree east of north. That means velocity of Ram is somewhat like this. A velocity of Sham rather is somewhat like this. this is the velocity of Sham. Right? So this we'll call it Vs. And this angle is 23 degree. That means this angle will be 30 degree. So what should be speed of Sham so that he collides with Ram? For them to collide, their velocities perpendicular to the line SR must be same, which means that Vs sin 30 degree should be equal to 10 sin 37 degree or Vs is equal to 10 into 3 by 5 divided by 1 by 2 and that means it is equal to 60 by 5 or 12 meter per second. So this is coming out to be 12. Let's now go to the next question. Question 8 says, velocity time graph of a particle moving in a straight line is shown in the figure. Find the displacement in meter in 10 second. Well, it's a pretty straightforward question. The displacement is simply the area of the velocity time graph. So we need to find area of this graph and the area is, we will take the area of uh, the trapezium and subtract the area of the triangle from this because it is in the negative direction. The displacement here is negative. So the displacement S will be area of the trapezium which is 1 by 2 into 8 height and sum of parallel sides would become 6 plus 8 or 14 minus area of this triangle which is 1 by 2 into base is 2 and the height is 5. This is equal to 56 minus 5 or 51 meter. So the answer to question 8 is 51. Very easy, isn't it? Let's go to the next question now. Question 9 says, a long horizontal rod has a bead of mass m which can slide along the length and is initially placed at a distance l equal to 1 meter from end A. The rod is rotating in horizontal plane about end A with a constant angular acceleration alpha is equal to 1 radian per second square. The coefficient of friction between the rod and the bead is mu equal to 0 0.4. Find the time in seconds after which the bead starts sliding. Take g equal to 10 meter per second square. Okay, so here we have centrifugal force, the pseudo force, friction, all these things into play. So if we look at the bead, there is force 
mg on it on the bead there is this force mg and there are two components of normal reaction one is the vertical component we can say nv and there is a horizontal component also the horizontal component of normal reaction provides it the tangential acceleration which is alpha into r and uh, so nh is equal to m alpha which is 1 into r which is again 1 so m into 1 si units is nh whereas nv is equal to mg which is again m into 10 units right the net normal reaction will be resultant of nv and nh so n is under root of nv square plus nh square and this is very close to because nh is quite small so this is very close to m into let's say m into 101 or m into about 10 so the limiting friction is going to be equal to 0.4 into n now for the sliding to happen the, the centrifugal force which is m omega square l this should be equal to fl that means m omega of course is alpha into t that means uh, omega square will be 1 t square or simply t square l is 1 this is equal to 0 0.4 into m into 10 solving we get t square is equal to 4 or t equal to 2 second so our answer to question 9 is 2 second or 0 2 let's go to the next question now question 10 says on a large table top two masses are placed at a distance r1 equal to 1 meter and r2 equal to 1 by 2 meter from the central axis table is rotating with constant angular speed omega naught about the axis and two masses are attached with light string which passes through an ideal pulley fixed at the central axis of rotation friction coefficient between masses and table top is mu equal to 0 0.7 for the given situation, the masses are just about to slip on the table top. Find the value of tension in Newton in the string. Use m1 is equal to 8 kg, m2 is equal to 2 kg, g is equal to 10 meter per second square. Okay. So, we draw a BD of the two blocks. For m1, the centrifugal force will be m1 omega square or omega naught square into r1 which is 1 there will be tension on this direction and uh, the limiting friction will be there so like this and this limiting friction is equal to 0 0.7 times m1g m1g let's put g as 10 and let's say okay this is the situation whereas the block of mass m2 there is m2 omega naught square into 1 by 2 the centrifugal force there is tens tension t and the frictional force here will be 0 0.7 m2 into 10 so in this case we have t plus 0 0.7 into 8t is equal to 8 
omega naught square and for the other one it is and for the other block we have t is equal to m2 omega square 1 by 2 that means 2 omega naught square plus 0.7 into 20 now there is 1 by 2 also here so we we have to get expression for t so we eliminate omega naught or omega naught square we multiply this equation by 8 and we get then 8t minus 0.7 into 160 is equal to t plus 0 0.7 into 8t and solving we get 7t is equal to 0 0.7 into 8 t plus 160 or 240 and that means t is equal to 24 newton so our answer to question 10 is 24 let's go to the next question now question 11 says a particle is projected with velocity u equal to 75 i cap plus a cap in xy plane acceleration of the particle is along negative y direction always as a is equal to minus 10 j cap find the time t when velocity vector becomes perpendicular to its initial velocity okay so velocity at time t we can simply write as u plus a t because it's a uniform acceleration and that means it is equal to 75 i cap plus 75 minus 10 t j cap and this velocity is perpendicular to u that means v dot u is equal to 0 we can use this dot product is equal to 0 this gives us 75 square plus 75 into 75 minus 10 t is equal to 0 or 2 into 75 square is equal to 75 into 10 t and that means t is equal to 2 into 75 by 10 or 15 second so answer to question 11 is 15 let's go to the next question now question 12 says a massless inextensible rope rests on a stationary wedge forming an angle theta equal to 53 degree with the horizontal one end of the rope is fixed to the wall at point a as shown in figure a small load p is attached to the rope at other end if the wedge starts moving towards left with a constant acceleration a not equal to 6 root 5 meter per second square then find the magnitude of acceleration in meter per second square of load P. With respect to the wedge, it's A0 down the incline. The wedge itself is having acceleration A0 towards left. So acceleration of P is resultant of A0 like this and A0 like this where a naught is 6 root 5 meter per second square and this angle is 53 degree this angle is also 53 degree so that means the horizontal component of a is a naught into 1 minus 3 by 5 or 2 a naught by 5 and the vertical component will be a naught into 4 by 5. So A is under root of A square plus AV square. So it will be A naught by 5 under root of 4 plus 16. So this is A naught by 5 into 2 root 5. If you put the value of A naught, we get 6 root 5 by 5 
into 2 into root 5 which is equal to 12 meter per second square. So answer to the question 12 is 12. Let's go to the next question now. Question 13 says the force along the incline required to just move a body up an incline plane is double the force along the incline required to just prevent it from sliding down. If phi is the angle of friction and theta is the angle which incline makes with the horizontal, then find the ratio of tan theta by tan phi. So it refers to this kind of a situation that there is a incline. Incline makes angle theta with the horizontal and there is this block. The force along the incline required to move a body up is double. So force to move it up the incline will be equal to, let's call it F1. F1 is equal to mg into sin theta plus mu cos theta. And now the force required to just prevent it from sliding down is equal to mg into sin theta minus mu cos theta and f1 is twice f2. We also have f1 is equal to twice f2. Then what do we have? That means we have sin theta plus mu cos theta is 2 times sin theta minus 2 mu cos theta or sin theta is equal to 3 mu cos theta, right? Which means tan theta is 3 mu. Now, what is the angle of friction? Angle of friction is the angle between the normal and the resultant contact force, the resultant of friction and normal. So, let's say this is the resultant, this is the angle phi then what is tan phi? Tan phi is equal to mu n friction divided by n or mu. So it's clear that tan theta by tan phi is equal to 3 mu upon mu or simply 3. So answer to question 13 is 3. Let's go to the next question now. Question 14 is for the system of springs and masses shown in figure, string between A and B is inextensible and the system is in equilibrium. If the string between AB is cut suddenly, then find the acceleration in meter per second square of block B immediately after cutting the string. So, in this case, the string that is cut is between A and B. This string is cut and immediately after it is cut, we have to find acceleration of block B. Okay. So, what is the tension in the lower spring? Tension in the lower spring will be equal to weight of block C which is 30 Newton. So immediately after the string AB is cut on block B the forces are its weight 6G and there is this tension T which is equal to 3G. Right? The force applied by the spring and under the action of these two forces acceleration is A. So it's very clear that we have 9G equals 6A or acceleration A is equal to 90 by 6 or 15 meter per second square. So answer to question 14 is 15. Let's go to the next question now. 